Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Vocast. I'm your host, Drew. We are here for session number eight, and this one is going to be with a very special guest, Mr. Bobby Bass, a.k.a. Bobby Waters. Welcome to the show, my friend. Hello. Thank you for having me on. Thanks for coming on, man. Um, so we're going to have him give a basic um, a basic intro to his music history and his music involvement. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. So um, music actually hadn't been a major part of my life, um, I'd say, until sophomore year or junior year of sophomore year of high school. Yes, I always get those mixed up. Mm -hmm. But uh, I did play trumpet before that for like through middle school and through high school. But I didn't really start singing until, uh, again, sophomore year of high school. That's when I started voice lessons, um, which essentially stemmed from my family members saying, hey, Bobby, you have a low voice. You should sing. And I was like, okay. I already did like drama school and theater, yeah, uh, like theater programs over the summer and stuff like that and through my high school. So I had like I, I I sang in those. I wouldn't really say like it was good singing, <laughs> but once I like learned how to sing and stuff through voice lessons, that is when I actually started building up like vocal technique and then like being yeah. involved in lots of lots <clears throat> of groups and stuff like that. So like after high school, I um I went to UMass Lowell and I actually went there for computer science. Sure uh, that was my major. And my minor, I did have a minor that was somewhat music related. It was uh, called sound recording technology, which is like sound production, stuff like that. Uh, and yeah, and I learned I learned about microphones. I learned how to record. I learned all about DAWs and stuff like that. So that kind of, I'm very glad that I uh, took that minor because it, um, I'm actually using it more than my computer science major right now sure uh, because it gave me the knowledge and it kind of prepared me for what I would, what I never would have expected would have happened next. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I went to UMass Lowell and I was in a couple of groups there. I was in like an acapella group, a uh, college acapella group called Acapella. <laughs> I was in their chamber choir <clears throat> um, and I obviously I just sang with friends and stuff like that. But I didn't really like post that much music online until 20. Like I had a YouTube channel for a couple of years before I blew up on TikTok, yeah. but it wasn't big or anything. It was only like a couple hundred, uh, a couple hundred like subscribers or something like that. Yeah. I'm actually going to put this jacket uh, back on because it's getting <laughs> a little cold in here. Oh, wow. But um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, essentially, my second to last, <clears throat> actually, no, it was my last year it was before my last year in college uh near the end of junior year was when COVID hit and obviously everything started shutting down yeah i remember um i was actually very sick at the time so i was thankful didn't know that the world was ending and stuff like that <laughs> yeah but um but that was uh spring 2022 and we went mm -hmm. home for spring break never came back and then yeah. after that semester ended um Obviously, we're, we were all like at home and stuff, trying to do our own thing because we couldn't leave or go anywhere. So my friend sent me um, some like TikTok stuff of like people duetting with bass, uh, <clears throat> um, people duetting like bass lines to something. Uh, I remember my friend Noah, he, he was the one that my friend sent me and I was like, oh, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. And so I started doing duet videos on TikTok. And eventually it just started blowing up from there. But yeah, and that's, that's a sort of my musical background uh, in, a, in a nutshell. And he and you most of you probably know him from his um, TikTok duets. And that's that's what got you over the top. Is that right? Mm, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that's pretty much his uh, musical history. He's a very talented singer. And we've seen that through all the music that he's put out over these past few years. So we are going to hammer him with a lot of questions to see what we can learn about him today so with that said we're going to start off pretty light uh, what is your favorite or preferred drink Ooh, uh def define like alcoholic drink or just drink in general? any drink any mm. drink anything that you can sip drink whatever i always make a water joke because that's my name but um besides water I would say, funnily enough, pineapple juice. I love pineapple juice. 
um and guilty pleasure anything that you can mix with pineapple juice uh like vodka and stuff like that i it's, do like <clears throat> pineapple juice is a guilty pleasure of mine like i, I don't tell people oh, really? i drink it but like i drink it it's 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 so good though it is so good i just love pineapples and then it's just so consistent it's just like a drink form and you're done mm-hmm. perfect yeah but yeah i would say that would be my drink of choice pineapple juice folks that's a first here on the vocast i've gotten two coffees i've gotten a root beer i've gotten one water i think that's all i've got yeah hey at the end of the day water's the most important Mm -hmm. yeah i actually don't drink coffee or soda and stuff so if i drank those that would probably be it but pineapple juice it's all (laughs) pineapple juice man that's awesome i might have to like when I get Tommy on here, I'm gonna have to see what he says, what his is, because <laughs> I'm curious because every one of the base gangs like favorite drinks is like almost polar opposite. It seems like. What were the other guys? Um, I remember um, Mar Marwan said was like I think it was like so it was a soda of some kind. Peter's was black coffee. Yours wow. is pineapple juice. Casper, oh, gosh, I don't remember what his is, but. That's so, that's kind of funny. I, I thought that was kind of funny. We we shall see what Tommy's is. Surprise, right. surprise! It's gasoline. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. <clears throat> Where's my? Where did it go? Oh yeah, here we go. Uh, so what got you into music? So can you kind of go into a little bit on like what got you into music? So you kind of told us your music history. So what really sparked your love for music and singing? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. As essentially it was, um, the voice lessons that I started taking, uh, my sophomore year of high school. Like I started playing trumpet in middle school, but like that was just something because like my friends were also in the trumpet section and we didn't really like try that harder stuff. I didn't really try with trumpet until like, I think sophomore year as well in high school. Yeah. But um, that's when I was promoted to first chair or whatever. And um, and but when I started taking voice lessons, I was like, this is kind of really fun. And yeah. um, and it's and then because I took those, I joined like the drama club after that uh, in high school where we did musicals. And I was like, this is fun singing. And then I joined the choir the year after that. Or I think it was my senior year. I joined the choir. And that was actually that was my first choir experience and and there's a lot of genres out there in the world and not a lot of them specialize or like require bass singers Mm -hmm. choirs are one of those genres that require bass singers so it was really nice to like finally get that first step in and like um find like a genre that like used my voice and stuff like that or not really genre more instrumentation but um but yeah feels nice that was kind of it no, I was just gonna say that feels nice to have a feel needed as like as far as like your voice is concerned. Oh, definitely. Especially I feel like um it leads into a conversation with like the emergence of TikTok, which um I'm sure we'll talk about later too. Yeah. But kind of like the bass singing that's emerged from TikTok and from uh like bringing that to Instagram and Twitter and YouTube. So I feel like bass singing is kind of like kind of like coming back up again like it's, it was it was popular way back then and now i feel like it's emerging again which i will be feel really like cool. it's absolutely exploded with your help and it's and several others da- david damonte um eric holloway mm-hmm. gosh there's some other ones out there that i can't name off the top of my head of course there's the rest of the base of gang gosh man that's it's crazy how big of a comeback it's making <clears throat> no definitely and I'm, I'm glad i'm glad to have my little part of it here definitely so uh who were some of the most influential figures both in your life as well as your musical career Ooh, that's a good one so i'd say like in my life um definitely my mom she's always been there to like help push me along and uh support me with like whatever <clears throat> whatever I wanted to do at the time. Like when I did sports, when I was younger, she like always helped me like uh, sign up for programs and stuff. And when I transitioned to like theater and music, she always like tried to help me find voice, voice teachers and stuff like that. So my Mm -hmm. mom, definitely my dad as well was very supportive. Um, Friends in high school as well. And 
mu- musical inspirations. So definitely, uh, I'm sure, like all the other ones have said, Avi Kaplan and stuff <laughs> like that, and Jeff Costellucci and Tim Faust, which um, they were definitely the top three guys that I listened to. Well, along with like Thurl Ravenscroft, he he's definitely up there, top three inspirations for me. Yeah, and um, because when I was kind of finding out how to bass sing and stuff like that. They were right there on YouTube for me to sing along with or to learn from. <clears throat> and um, and so definitely them. Another one, um, another singer uh, who's one of my favorite singers, uh, David, David Draymond. He uh, sings for a band called Disturbed. Yes. And uh, yeah. And he has he has such a magical voice and stuff like that. And that was <clears throat> also um, one one thing I'm looking into now. I'm um, doing voice lessons again, actually. Are you? And yeah. Um, I'm learning how to sing in uh, in certain styles, like especially rock, because that that kind of inspired me to do that. Right. And it's something that my voice hasn't really done before. Like I never really need to sing that high, so I kind of wanted to stretch my boundaries a little bit there. There you go. Um, so David Draymond is definitely up there as well. Yeah. Um, what are some? What is one of these? What is something that one of these influential figures has said to you that has stuck within your stuck with you your entire life journey? Said to me or said in general? Just or um, you could do either one or both. Hmm. That's a good question. I remember um I've I've talked with Avi a bunch of times on Instagram and he uh actually when I first started contact uh when I first got into contact with him, uh was me sending over Peter Barber and I's cover of the summit. And obviously (laughs) it was an Avi Kaplan song. So I was like, I'll send it to Avi and he loved it. And he, um, and like right after I sent it to him, like he was talking to me and he's like, he wanted to know like, uh, like what my plans were and like, like how, how'd I start singing like that and stuff like that. And so that was really, that was really good to hear from, as I said, an inspiration before. Mm -hmm. Uh, so definitely that, and um yeah <clears throat> that's the thing that comes to mind definitely man it is that not like the most humbling thing ever to somebody tell you that you did an awesome job of covering their music yeah definitely and i'm sure it's something uh i always thought like i don't really s- song right but uh, i always think of it from like sometimes from their perspective too it's like wow my music's growing so like other people can cover it so it was kind of like a cool mutual thing like um yeah is there any uh, specific sayings or anything that comes to mind? Like perhaps like someone said like one line that stuck with you this entire time. Oh, hmm. Anything motivational, inspirational? Music wise, I have one. <clears throat> um, one that stuck with me. I just remembered. Um, it was it was on Twitter. I think it was Rob Dietz who said it, or someone else, and it kind of helped me along especially when it came to practicing and he said um uh practicing and seeing how your voice or instrument improves while practicing is not linear like you're not going to practice one day and then practice the next day and practice the next day and you're going to keep getting better each day sometimes you have those off days and sometimes you have those off weeks or your voice or your chops or your fingers or whatever you use to play instruments or stuff Mm -hmm. just isn't really up to par so that kind of like made me realize like if i had a bad practice session i'm like that's okay hopefully it'll be better next time i just got to keep at it so that was that really helped yeah definitely and at the end of the day too we have to keep in mind that we're not we're imperfect people like Mm -hmm. we're not perfect we can't expect to perform perfect all the time exactly the the most talented singers in the world um their voice isn't a hundred percent every day uh, bl- bless them for trying when like going on tour and stuff. And obviously there are people who can go on tour and, um, and have their voice sustained and be fine throughout, but still they'll have those nights where they're like, eh, it wasn't, it wasn't the, de- it wasn't ideal. I'm sorry, everyone. Yeah. And it's at the end of the day, it's, it's like, it's nobody's perfect. And that was something that I really like, I had to hammer home with myself back when I was first starting my music journey and the YouTube journey too, is because, I'm sitting here. I'm thinking, wow, these people are so good. They're, they sound so good. And I'm I'm starting. I'm s- still have. I'm not privy to any of the details in music whatsoever at this point in time. Like at the beginning of the YouTube channel, I had no idea. 
Like I, mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't fully know about pitch correction, mixing and all that. And I was like, Y'all, people, you got to start from somewhere. Yeah. Like I, I wasn't aware that like people were like, people don't sound like this live. And I was like, I sound like poop. I don't know why I don't sound like them. It's, they're like, because it's heavily mixed and mastered. Mm-hmm. People, people sound like you all the time before, while they're recording. And I'm like, okay. Phew. Yeah, Whew. definitely. Actually, that, that was a great, um, that actually brings up a great point because so many people are like, wow, these people like Bobby or Luke or Avi or, um, or David, all these people, they're like posting these incredible videos. They sound amazing. They're the perfect singer. It's like, well, you're just hearing the best stuff. You're, we're hearing, exactly. you're hearing all this stuff. It's kind of like Instagram. Like when you're scrolling through Instagram and you see your friend, it's like, oh, chilling in Costa Rica or something. And it's like, oh, wow, they look like they're having a great life. No, it's just social they're media. showing just the, best the best part. Yeah, exactly. And so that's what you kind of do when you're like releasing music and stuff like that. Like you'll have artists and like artists who release a song and you're like, wow, this is incredible. And they, that they could just do it. But there's a lot of practice that goes behind it and re-recording and stuff. Like I'm, I know there's tons and tons of like very popular artists that everyone knows that go back into like a booth to re-record for the third time because they're like, no, I'm still not happy with it. I need to be perfect. And mm-hmm. we've all done that. I've done that. Yeah. And um, and sometimes it doesn't always end perfect, but it just ends a little bit more perfect than than it, it did the last time. It gives you a little bit of edge when you feel like you've done it right. Oh, and, definitely. And I'll tell you too, it's something cool that um. A lot of people don't really under fully understand. I didn't understand it until I started recording this first cover that I did that just dropped. It's like congratulations. Thank you. I have to send it to you later if in case you please haven't heard do. It. Um, <clears throat> this I didn't understand how many times people have to re-record and how many different takes people do for the kind of music that mm. it, the the field of music that we're in. Definitely. Yeah, I, like I do a bunch of takes and stuff like that. Even even if it's just a couple words and stuff sometimes i slice the words from each take because i just like it best that's what uh fernie did whenever we were covering this i mean i sent in literally like probably four different takes of one part i sent in sections of several other different parts i I didn't really understand that that was part of the reason why music sounds so freaking good whenever it comes out Mm -hmm. because you're taking the best out of every single recording Definitely. Like, like you, you probably know who Billie Eilish is. Mm -hmm. She, um, she, I think it was stated by her or Phineas in a magazine or someplace online that, uh, one of her songs, like, uh, it was like a combination from like 80 takes or something. And, uh, be, and a lot of people do that. Like it, it's not just a modern thing. I I guarantee you it's happened way back then, like in the seventies or stuff or the eighties, like, um, like Bohemian Rhapsody, for for instance, that that was that was probably from hundreds and hundreds of different takes, like mm-hmm. not just the solo line, but the harmonies and stuff. Hundreds of takes. Like I heard they ran out of tape because they kept recording and stuff like that. Like it's not just a modern thing; it happens. It's happened all throughout history, and obviously, yeah, there are a bunch of bands that just uh, that are great and do it like through one take, and it sounds great. But some people are very, very like. What's the word I'm looking for? Very particular about their voice or their instruments. So they want to be not just perfect for the audience, but perfect for them. Exactly. And that's, that's at the end of the day, that's kind of the where in the same boat I'm at. It's if I'm going to record something, I want it to sound great, as great as I can possibly make it. So I'm going to submit as many recordings as I need to, to make it sound great. Mm-hmm. Especially with my uh, voice insecurity, as I call it. Yeah. Yeah, we all have a little bit of a, what's it called? Um, oh, I forget the term for it, which is funny because you know how you have that word on the tip of your tongue? It's like the easy word, but it's just mm-hmm. you just lose it. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it'll come back to me. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's I was able to breach out of that. Um, I was able to breach out of that insecurity phase and I just full sent it and uh sent all my recordings over they got mastered and we put out that cover so it was pretty cool it's always that first step that's kind of just the biggest and it also helps to think that like i look i i look at all these talented friends and stuff i have and um imposter syndrome that was the uh word I was uh-huh, thinking okay yeah and 
literally some of the most incredible musicians I know have imposter syndrome and stuff like that. Really? Oh yeah. Like sure people, enough. people you would think there's no way this person has imposter syndrome. They're incredible. Mm -hmm. They, they most likely do. I'm gonna have to talk about this with you off camera. Cause that's something I'm interested to find out about. <clears throat> oh yeah. I have imposter syndrome all the time. Yeah. I definitely man. It's, it's surprising considering how well you do. Oh, thank you. Um, it's good that it's, I hide it. <laughs> you had it very well, all things considered, right? Yeah. So um, back on track a little bit here. Uh, do you play any instruments? Well, I played. Um, oh, I know you mentioned you played the trumpet. Yeah, I played trumpet through uh, middle school and high school. So that was, I guess, so that was like seven years. I actually pulled it out a couple of days ago and I was like noodling on it. So like <laughs> I'm, I'm not like not the best on it but i know what the notes are i know what the fingerings are relative to the notes i know how the instrument works and i can sight read with it mm -hmm. um so so i can play it to like i'd say a high school degree i do have knowledge of it beyond a high school to behind beyond high school mm -hmm. but um but actually playing the instrument itself yeah but besides um, that uh i don't play uh i don't play any instruments just your voice after that right yeah yeah i got you uh, let's see what are some things that m most people may not know about you, especially like with your internet music life. Hmm. Well, uh, something I mentioned to you, uh, before we started, um, I also have, um, while music is my full-time gig, um, right now I have a side job that I usually do like once a week and stuff, mm -hmm. which is I'm actually an archery instructor. And a lot of people don't know that. Especially if you just know me as um as Bobby Bass or whatever, um that's so that's kind of my side job. I just teach classes and stuff like that, give instruction, um and I also do like a bunch of marketing things for the company as well online. Sure enough, man. So that that's one thing that comes to mind. Uh, but yeah. Uh, any other random facts? Hmm. What else? What other random facts about me? Uh. Uh, I've, I've gone to whitewater rafting over a dozen times. Uh, I love whitewater rafting. I go to Colorado every year because a lot of my family's out there. And, um, so that's another thing. Uh, that's a pretty big trip by the way. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's like a four hour flight there and back and stuff. Uh, but yeah. it's, we go out there for like a week or a little bit more. So it's fun. Yeah. And uh, another thing, I'm also um, a black belt in Krav Maga, which is an Israeli martial art. Israeli martial art. That's interesting. Yes. It was uh, my dad and I did it for like eight years. And in traditional Krav, they don't have belts. But the one that we did uh, did as like a sign of progression and stuff. So it was really it was really, really um, cool to do that with my dad. Not a lot of people have like um, a lot of father son. uh bonding experiences like that because we were like going multiple times a week mm -hmm. and like the black belt test there were to get your first degree there were three belt black belt tests that were each four hours long so it was kind of good to like push each other through that um so that's another thing yeah it's pretty sweet man i didn't know that um they had uh forms of martial arts in that direction that's pretty awesome mm -hmm. yeah i think it was uh made in <laughs> world war ii world war ii that's even cooler yeah Fun fact for y'all today. And I'd say the last thing that I'll, uh, that's like a little fun fact about me that, um, kind of like attributed to starting voice lessons, uh, halfway through a school, I joined the speech and debate team. And, um, I did, so I did, uh, this one piece called the day the crayons quit for the children's literature section, where I did a bunch of different voices for the crayons. And I, I was our first um, state champion for the high school. Sure In enough. speech and debate. Wow. How about that? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Speech and debate. Mm -hmm. Was this extracurricular? Yeah. yeah. In high school, by the end of high school, uh, I did, for extracurricular activities, I did uh, the drama club, speech and debate team. Uh, film was huge in my high school. I did film. I did band, I did choir, and I was in an acapella group that we did. Yes, yeah, 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 gotcha. So I kind of like stacked out on extracurriculars there. Didn't end up getting home till probably dark 30? No, 
<laughs> it would they were they were late nights. <laughs> I can tell you, I, I could relate. I was in marching band all four years of high school. Oh yeah, we didn't really have a marching band because our our band program wasn't that big. But um, but I but I do not envy you because I've I've seen like those marching uniforms, especially when it's outside and hot and stuff like that. My girlfriend went through it. I was like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. See, the beautiful thing about it is that despite how menacing it looked at times it was absolutely worth every single inch of it i would i mean it would be hear. i would be we would be us at least we practiced for four hours every or two nights a week so we would do tuesday and thursday from five to nine and then we had friday night lights and we would do we would do stand songs and then we'd go out in the halftime, play the halftime show. We come back, mm -hmm. do the same thing for the next two quarters, and then we call it. I wouldn't get yeah. home Friday nights until eleven thirty, probably. Mm -hmm. but, Not a lot of people realize how much <clears throat> effort and how much practice and how much of everything else goes into marching band. So it's easy to watch a football game and go, "Oh, there's the marching band," but there's so much that goes behind that. Oh my god! And it's so cool too. Whenever there were like actual um, people in the like student section that actually understood how much talent it took yeah, and how much hard work it took because mm -hmm. to give someone to give you, yeah, I can't talk to give you guys <laughs> some quick insight. So what makes marching band so difficult is that you're playing uh, complicated music with an instrument. You're most people normally sit down playing at most. They'll be standing up playing, but they're stationary. You're playing a complicated musical piece while moving and you're not just walking you are practically fancy running mm -hmm. and you're doing all of that while making shapes with your bodies on the field there you're literally doing like five or six things at once and you're That's crazy you're watching the conductor who's way over here on the sideline and so you have to be in time yeah, you have to be your footsteps have to be in time. You also have anywhere from two to ten judges out there on the field with you. If you're in competition, they're out there on the field with you, walking right beside you, commenting on how you perform, you play, you march, everything. It it can mm -hmm. get intense, but yeah, that's a little bit mm -hmm. of insight to marching band. In case you've not known much about it, there it's you go. it's if very you feel like you're up for it. Y'all who are watching right now, that's that's the premise of it. Definitely do it if you get the chance. It It's so much fun and it's very rewarding, but mm. you better be prepared to work hard for it. Yes, it, an intense amount of work. Like you ever see those videos? I'm sure you've seen of the people forming like uh, Michael Jackson moonwalking on the on the field. Yes. Like it's just crazy what people are able to do. And still play an, an instrument and it not be out of pitch. And sound in, good. Sound good and in time and all that. <laughs> like, I thought high school bands were good. And then I started watching people like in drum corps and stuff. And I just, I went ballistic. Like these are, this is just amazing. You know, mm -hmm. it's it, awesome. If, <clears throat> if you want to see what it looks like, uh, go. I'm sh There are a ton of videos on YouTube of like first person um of like first pers person cameras of people in marching band and you can see like what they what they're actually seeing and when they're marching so it's not just watching the whole thing you can see as an on an individual level that he, that's a very good point yes. that he brought up there because that is all, if you want to know what it's like to be in a marching band those are the most intense moments on those first person views mm -hmm. so go check it out for sure yeah um, let's see, what's the next question here? So, um, what are some things that you do in your off time when you're not singing, recording, performing, et cetera? Ooh, good question. Um, so I'm, I'm a very extroverted person. I have my introverted moments, but, um, I really like hanging out with friends and like either going to the movies or going to their house and doing something. Yeah. Uh, so usually if I don't have, um, if I'm not really doing anything, at the moment and i'm like i just hit up a friend and be like hey want to hang out or something like that and we'll do something uh besides that uh, i enjoy video games and stuff like halo is um halo is a big favorite of mine i love playing halo uh i have an xbox right over there um and uh what else do i do surprisingly i actually don't uh practice archery on my own i usually just keep that as work and stuff like that fair enough um 
Uh, but besides that, what else do I do? I don't know. That's that's a that's a lot of what I do. <laughs> you're, you're you're usually in the in the studio, pretty much. Yeah, it's it's usually just me and the computer doing doing our thing. Yeah, yeah. whether it's arranging something, recording something. I turned a little southern there for a second, but um, but yeah, most of my time is behind my computer doing my thing. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Off off um, off topic question here a little bit, but what's the best Halo? Oh, what's I best Halo compared to my favorite Halo? I think it's still I I really liked Halo Reach. That was it wasn't the one I got started on, but mm-hmm. when I first got an Xbox console, that was the one I like. I like, played so much. Like my hours on that game exceeded any other Halo game by so far. <laughs> uh, I'd say my top are definitely Halo Reach and Halo Three. I I have to stick with you. Halo Three was my ultimate. Oh, Halo Three is classic. We all have those middle school memories when we were at our friend's house, with, all with four controllers, doing split screen, playing those no screen cheating multiplayer. Exactly. Yeah. You're always, you're always screen looking because you're in middle <laughs> school. <it's> right. <laughs> good t- good times. <laughs> Dude, that's a throwback. That really throws me back. Oh God, yeah. God I hate being old. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if only we could have a time machine and go back. Believe me, I would if I could. Uh, let's see. So how often do you practice singing throughout the week? And how long do you typically practice for? That was actually um, that's actually a great question because it recently changed. Um, beforehand, um, before this year, I didn't really have a regimented practice schedule. Um, I, I essentially just practice when i like recorded music or stuff like that like i would do warm up sometimes maybe like once a week i would do like i would sit down and do like exercises and stuff like that or a couple times a week or no times a week Mm -hmm. um so i didn't really have a regimented schedule and stuff like that but this year i was like i need to turn this around and it kind of started with um also me uh starting voice lessons again up this year and um i got this new um excuse me, this habit tracker app, (laughs) which pops up right on my iPhone. And um, it's great because it's always like there on my screen and it shows if it's like incomplete or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I have three, I have four habits right now. And uh, let me see what they are. So one of them is singing practice for at least uh, 30 minutes a day. And um and so I do that uh, essentially every day. If my voice is feeling bad, I kind of skip a day and leave that. But I've been pretty consistent with it, especially with um, picking up voice lessons back again. I have a, a subharmonic practice um, habit because I, I didn't really practice <clears throat> subharmonics. I kind of just messed around with them and did them a bunch. Yeah, just when you uh, had time, I guess. Yeah, just like yeah. just like messing around like uh, exactly, yeah. and just like I n- I never really like sat down and like okay I need to practice except when I was like except for like six years ago when I started learning subharmonics, mm-hmm. but um so I wanted to kind of pick up on practicing that and I have that just like for five minutes, then I have um another thing called tr- song transcription where I listen to a song, mm-hmm. um. Uh, find what key it is in, and then try and play it as perfect as I can on the piano without messing up or or transcribing it down on sheet music. Sure enough. That's pretty cool. And so cool. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to like help my, not just my voice that way, but my <clears throat> training my ear yeah, and stuff like that. Oh, and my last, <laughs> my last habit I have is watch one music theory video a day because I figure if I just watch a, mu- a music theory video, it could be on anything. It could be on modes. It could be on jazz it could be on it could be on even singing and stuff mm-hmm. i just figured if i watch at least one video a day like after a year my knowledge is gonna kind of expand yeah just definitely go through the horizon and i feel like it's i've already been doing it for like a little less than a month now and uh i i feel i feel a lot of things improving which is really cool so do yeah. you, you mentioned music theory do you arrange any uh it's I actually, um, the only arrangements that I've done uh, were for, 
either base gang or um wellerman i haven't really done that many like i wouldn't call myself an arranger i'm more of like an amateur arranger um when it comes to that uh, i feel like i'm improving and uh, my girlfriend's actually um taking a class right now uh in arranging and i'm kind of like hey could you send me the worksheets and stuff like that <laughs> and it's it's more like choral or choral arranging and stuff or not mm -hmm. choral but like kind of classical instrumentation concert band stuff yeah but yeah. uh it's still good to know that stuff um and i just uh and also because one of the groups i'm in pitch slapped yeah, uh, yeah. i go to i go to boston like twice a week to practice with them and obviously being around berkeley students most of them are berkeley students mm -hmm. it's uh just like seeing their overwhelming knowledge of all this stuff i was like that's really cool i want to learn this stuff too yeah and yeah. um and so yeah that's kind of that that's pretty cool man yeah. that i have to look into this app later see if it might help me oh yeah it's it's been helping me it's called habit <laughs> It's kind of like a, a it, it has How like quaint. a, it's only on iPhone. It it has like a pink kind of icon with like a check mark and a circle, almost filled circle. But yeah, it's called Habit. Gotcha. I'll have to check that out. Check it out if you want to stay on Habits for everyone else watching as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what does your warm up routine look like on any given day? Ooh, that's, that's a good question. Um, so if my voice is like, um, sometimes if I'm like talking enough, I don't need to warm up too much, but you, but you hear like the, the basic things like your lip trills and stuff like, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just do like octave slides with that, um, kind of through my range to, uh, get everything nice and warm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, what, what other ones that I use? I mostly for my like practicing, I go through a bunch of like exercises uh, that um, that I had throughout uh, my voice lessons because I have I have those over Zoom and I just download the video mm -hmm. and watch it back if I want to like practice to it. Yeah. Um, uh, so let me, let me I'm trying to think off the top of my head some like exercise things that I do uh, trying to like. Oh, my mind is going blank right now. But mostly um, just for warm ups, I do like lip trills and stuff like that, kind of like light slides um, through my range to kind of get everything working. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Do you any SOVT? SOVT? Yeah. Oh, wait. I, I actually, funnily enough, I did a sponsorship for a device, um, that SOVT device. Um, and sometimes if my voice is like feeling real bad and if I'm like, I'm cracking or something, I use it. It's like this little, like it's about that big, and and uh, you use it kind of like a straw to mm -hmm. like sing through, and you can adjust the um, how much pressure you're singing against. Oh, that's and cool. If my voice is like <clears throat> not feeling it uh, a day, and it's like it really needs to be warmed up, I'll just whip that out and I'll just um, mess with it for a little bit. I mostly like doing like slides with it, um, and uh, yeah, that that I feel like that does help. Sweet. I have to look into those for sure. Yeah. And so, and if some of them are too expensive, just use a straw. Yeah, that's what are watching. That's what a lot of people have been telling me too. I'm I haven't done any SOVT work lately and I'm I've never really tried it and I'm trying to figure out how I can go about doing it. Yeah. Well the, good luck with that. Yeah. Um, so let's see. What are your we're getting into uh range related stuff here uh what are your record high and record low chest notes oh it's a two-part question Record high chest notes well i feel like um when especially the higher part of chest notes um a lot of people like a lot of you know about mix but like a lot of people mm -hmm. sometimes think things are pure chest when they're more of like kind of combination of chest and mix Mm -hmm. I'll say that um, the like most powerful <clears throat> chest one that I've uh, that I've belted before is it was probably B flat. It was a B flat. B flat four. A B flat four. Yes, thank you. Gotcha. A B flat four up there, and um, and we'll see if I go above that at some point. But we'll see. It was very hard to do. 
and for the lower range after um this was when was it i only hit the note twice it was an f1 in chest and um yeah that that was my reaction when i did it <laughs> but um i think there's a video of me doing it on tiktok uh that i posted like a year or something ago it was it was the morning after my um after my friend's grad party and obviously <laughs> we all um we were all very loud and yelling and stuff the night before and indulging ourselves yeah so that next morning my voice was like and and it was like just just hearing myself talk i was like oh my god <laughs> but um but yeah lowest chest note after v fatiguing my voice very much was an f1 it's pretty solid you've only ever done that what twice yeah <laughs> And, and, and it was very short. Like I hit the note like a couple times and, um, but I wouldn't, I didn't really have time to like record or anything because, well, I wasn't really at my house either, but yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Plus you probably didn't think about it anyway. Yeah. I mean, oh, well, if I wanted to do like a low note like that, I'll just do subs. Yeah. At the end of the day, your subs are healthier than straining for the lowest note in your chest anyway. Exactly. So what are your, so we, you've got your records. So what's your daily usable? Oh, daily usable. Good question. I'd say about usable, like singing wise, I usually always have uh, at least a low C. Uh, if uh, sometimes I have a low B and if I have a really good day throughout the day, sometimes I have a B flat, mm -hmm. but um, I'd say usually it's around a low C comfortable. Do you have, so I know you have. I'd say you have what right, right around an A every day, but it's unreliable. Probably, I have like like when I first wake up, I usually have like a low A or an, a low A flat, and sometimes that throughout the morning. But once it gets into like the chunk of the day, like the afternoon and stuff, yeah. or uh, or the evening, yeah, then it's then it's a little. That's one of the harder things, especially as like uh, a younger, a younger like I'm 24. I consider myself still a a younger singer compared to like someone who's like singing in their forties. Right. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so being a bass singer when, um, while you're young, it's going to be hard having that range throughout the day. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like if, if we had this interview in the morning, like my voice would sound much different. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day too, we're, we're starting to get into the evening voice, uh, portion of the day at least. Yeah. Oh, and also I forgot to answer the other part. The usually my um highest chest up there strong is probably like I'd say like an E4, maybe. Gotcha. E4. Pretty pretty solid range for a low bass there. Pretty solid. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm improving my mix over um over uh voice lessons, which is helping make my mix up there more powerful. Like it wouldn't be a hundred percent chest. But I could, but I could like hit like a fours and make it sound powerful sometimes. I had to think about it for a second there. Let's see. Let's, or let's see. Part this portion asks if the guest can sing the highest and lowest, but I that's op that's optional. <clears throat> well, we'll see. And. I haven't talked all day, so that's my excuse if I don't hit like good low notes and stuff. <laughs> For subharmonics, let's see. <clears throat> uh, la, uh, I'd e, say around there. E and, flat. Um, that was an E flat. And right there at an E E flat. I will take that. Uh, chest note, we'll see. Da, Solid. La, Oh, B1 there. B1. I'll take it. Nice. And um, I'll just try and go for like a high falsetto note. We'll see. <laughs> it probably clipped right there. but It, yeah. it, it clipped out, but I, it, I saw you getting into the top of the fourth octave. That, or getting close to the top of the fourth octave. There. Yeah. It's pretty solid. Pretty solid. Let's see. Who are some of your personal favorite artists that you've collaborated with? Ooh, dang, no, I have to remember a bunch that I've collaborated with. Uh, like, 
one that one that instantly pops to mind, which is just an overall great guy to collaborate with, um, Cole McGinnis. And I don't just say that because he has an incredible voice. And um, and also I really like collaborating because our voices mesh very well together, especially if we're like singing low stuff together. Like if you checked out Misty Mountains or Oh Death and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's not just that part. It's how he's he's very, very communicative, if I, if I said that right. He's very great at communicating. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're like, uh, he always gets his stuff in on time. It always sounds great. It's it's usually always tuned, which is perfect because then you have to you don't have to tune it yourself, and you're like, oh, perfect. And um, and he always and if you ever like, actually, he was on Misty Mountains, but it was very last minute. Mm -hmm. uh, we had someone else who couldn't do uh, Misty Mountains, so we're like, hmm, let's throw one more person on. And we're like, why didn't we ask Colm? And also, now that I think about it, why didn't we ask Eric Holloway? That would have been legendary. That would have been but, cool um, too. But yeah. But yeah, but um, definitely, um, definitely, Colm is up there. I'm gonna exclude the bass gang and Wellerman because I'm in groups with them. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, Melinda and Lauren Paley, they're they're great. Um, they're great. They get their stuff in on time. Uh, if we're collaborating with them, and uh, if they're we're doing a collaboration on their end, they're very open and flexible, flexible and welcoming to um to any like advice or notes that we can add because usually when we're doing this we we send stuff to them and be like hey here's the stuff you need to sing but also if you want to add some more stuff or do something differently like here and here go wild because we're we we've all been singing for a while we know uh we know a lot of the intricacies of our voices that like the other person probably doesn't know mm -hmm. and um and yeah definitely them uh jonathan young always wanted to collaborate with him and i know i'm forgetting a bunch of other people um but uh but those are some of the ones that immediately come to mind yeah so it's, it's a bit of a two-part question so you list some of the, your personal favorite ones that you've collaborated with and who would you like to collaborate with in the immediate futures being anyone that you can realistically collaborate with or someone that you don't feel like you can either way Ooh. That's a great question. Uh, Avi Kaplan, definitely. I would love to collaborate with him. <clears throat> and I, I'll just get the three base gods out of the way. Um, <laughs> Avi, Jeff, and uh, Tim. Uh, it would be great to collaborate with any of them. And um, and it, it seems like possible for the future that that could happen, which is exciting. Definitely in the cards um, for Avi, for you, it sounds like. Yeah. And... Um, uh another one obviously one of my favorites uh david Draymond. i don't think that would be possible just because of the stylic stylistic differences and he's in a band that's like he's in a very <laughs> popular band yeah yeah um uh, and because there's also a lot of artists out there that you that don't really do collaborative projects and stuff like that fair enough but yeah. um but uh ooh, who else Billie Eilish would be cool. That would be cool. interesting, to say the least. I feel like our voices would work really well together. Um, those are those are some of the main ones that uh, come to mind when when you first ask. But yeah, I'd say definitely them. For sure, for sure. If I think of any more, I'll throw them in later. Yeah, definitely. Let's see. I say that a lot. I need to get. I need to stop <laughs> saying that in all of my podcasts. It's ridiculous. That is okay. You would figure I would have nailed this professional things by now. I'm eight episodes deep, and I still am doing unprofessional things. I had a professor in college uh, for critical listening. One of the, the, definitely the hardest sound recording tech class, and he would always say, "Let's get a sense of," or "You need to get a sense of," and stuff like that. And my friend. <laughs> made a mark every time he said get a sense of this and i think he said in one class he said it over two dozen times <laughs> so sure even even professionals in that world they'll they they, they have their own things lot. yeah well, this is being very bouncy today i feel that let's see do you have any tips tricks or life hacks for anyone that sings wants to sing or is trying to make a career out of singing hmm so uh so when it comes to singing in general the good stuff drink a ton of water more than a normal person would not like 
two gallons a day or whatever, but just just constantly, consistently drink water because uh, if you don't drink water and you sing a lot, your voice is not going to be great or very consistent. Your body will um, punish you for it, by the way. Exactly. You'll want to keep those vocal folds hydrated. And um, so that's one of them. If If you're singing something and it hurts, stop singing it. You can address it later, but just stop singing if it hurts. That's very, very, very good rule of thumb, especially for like more extreme styles of singing. Like if you're trying to sing subharmonics and it's hurting and then you're like, mm, I should keep trying this to see if I get it. No, no. Take a break. No, please. You stop. Throat singing um, comes to mind also. You throat singing 100% definitely. Um, people who sing like who sing like rock vocals or metal wrong can do it. Like the, the singer the lead singer of Avenged Sevenfold. Mm-hmm. He, he destroyed his voice and he had to he had to get surgery on it. And then he learned how to sing Oof. properly. And then the next album was one of Avenged Sevenfold's most popular albums. And it was like his new his new like singing without destroying his voice. Mm-hmm. Um and also if you're doing music professionally, it takes a lot it takes a lot of work. Um it can it can be like obviously your schedule can be like more flexible than people who have like nine to five jobs or something like that. Mm. But, but you need to pack that still full of like constantly making stuff and constantly improving yourself. Um, because otherwise, because in a lot of cases being, um, uh, just doing music can't, isn't really a lucrative career. Mm -hmm. unless you have like very big uh accounts or if you're a part of a group or a label company or something um it takes a lot of work so that's just like marching band it's Mm -hmm. just something to note it's very 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 uh, it's a very hard working Mm -hmm. uh, profession like if 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 i'm not like in lol with my girlfriend or like on on vacation or stuff something i usually work just every day the hours can va- the hours will vary definitely but um when i'm on my own i just work every day i i don't usually take weekends off unless i'm again like unless i go up to Lowell and visit my girlfriend and still i would do stuff there but yeah. um but that is good that is something good to know for sure for sure definitely it's a lot of good knowledge in there man i just okay. have let's see I have three to four more questions and then we got the bit of a divider break um for for, uh what are some of the funniest memories you have from working in the groups that you've worked in so being the wellerman pitch slap to the base gang that's a great question uh i'm sure a lot more will come to mind um i remember let's see well the thing about like the base gang and wellerman i've actually never met them any Mm -hmm. of them um funnily enough i've only met um our friend in contact with our Wellerman, um, with the Wellerman's label company, 10 West, Ruben. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the only one I met. Like when I went to London last year, I, Johnny wasn't there. He was in like, uh, yeah, I think he was in the U S. So I only, I've never actually met any of them. So like funny stuff would happen on, um, like on discord calls or, uh, <laughs> if, or if we're doing like our jeopardy game and stuff like that. Um, uh so that would happen a lot of there's a lot of funny bloopers that we sometimes put together like um i think it was only patreon exclusive for the base gang but we posted um uh like the bloopers to century to (laughs) to marwan centuries which was very funny um but a lot more funny stuff like happens like within pitch slap because like i'm i'm actually there and stuff um so like just during rehearsals, like one of the one of the funny things for um when we're doing like a new song or trying to get a feel for the song, our music director for Pitch Slap Tyler, they go on like a like a five to ten minute rant before they're like, Okay, this song, think spring break in Miami. <laughs> you, you all got you all got jungle juice, but you're trying to you're you're trying to be fancy. You're pretending that jungle juice is like champagne and you're drinking it like <laughs> and they and they just go into this super long tangent. And I would I would put my voice memo um app and record us <laughs> singing songs because I practiced to that. Yeah. And um and the first several minutes would just be Tyler explaining it and it's and it's funny every single time. 
and oh. um the and also we had like pitch lapped retreat which um which is where we all went to new york last fall a lot of funny stuff happened there <laughs> um i uh, another one that comes to mind i was when i um when melinda's tour reached boston and i sang with her at her boston concert um that was kind of the culminate it was like the final the final destination for her tour mm-hmm. and we had like a bunch of people there we had um it, it was me it was her it was um we had uh ali we had mia like bagpipes and violin Mm -hmm. um ali was there mia was there um johnny del toro uh cullen uh cullen was there we just had a ton of people and after the show and before we all just just messed around and hung out i remember one funny memory um we uh i think it was after the show we melinda ali mia and i all got our phones out and all live streamed on tiktok at the same time (laughs) And, um, everyone there, we just went and, um, we just went and like was improvising songs and all just jamming together for like (laughs) 15 minutes or something. And then after we went to the hotel place, they were staying at and played like Jackbox games, which was hysterical (laughs) as they always are. Oh yeah, absolutely. Dude, so many good times in so many different places. So many good times and here's to many more. I think I have a feeling there's um, a lot of things are in the works for a bunch of the groups that I'm in for this year, mm-hmm. um, which makes me very excited for more of these moments. 2023 is already working out to be a big year. Oh, it's going to it's going to be huge. It is. <clears throat> so uh, back to circling back around to some music again. Um, so we kind of sort of know what your thoughts are on this, but we kind of want to know as a whole, uh, what are your thoughts on extended techniques as a whole in singing or in music on extended techniques? Um, that's a great question. Um, honestly, if it sounds good, use it. Like if you think about it, your technically your falsetto could be an extended technique as well. You could consider that an extended technique. So it, <clears throat> so do use whatever technique you want, to, um that that would sound good and make you able to sing whatever you want to sing as long as it's healthy if it's not healthy and it could destroy your voice over the course of years or something that's on you but um but honestly i promote extended techniques um as much as as much as i can because it can lead to some very interesting and very creative choices in music which i really like and that's kind of the that's kind of one of my favorite things about music uh creativity subharmonics being your favorite one to use it appears uh do you use any others uh um besides subharmonics sometimes i use i rarely use it but sometimes i use like a little vocal growl that you won't really be able to hear it on here because i it's not properly EQ, but it's like <sighs> and stuff like that if i mm-hmm. wanted to use that for low notes I can't really do whistle tones or stuff like that. Obviously, I I can do falsetto. Um, I don't do inhale singing down low. Oh, um, I have I have some friends who can go. Like I had a friend call. Actually, my um, the other bass singer in Pitch Slapped. Uh, he uh he's very good at inhale and he can go super low. But I also <laughs> had a friend in my group in college in acapella he he could get his inhale so low and he could literally slide down like it and to get to the point where it just sounds like a metronome because it was it was so low just so you could hear the individual vibrations and clicks in his voice inhale is my favorite by far it is my preferred Mm -hmm. honestly it's one that i wish i dabbled a lot more with but um i don't (laughs) there we go See, because it, with inhale, unlike subharmonics or growl, there's like not really a limit you can go since it's kind of like fry. Mm-hmm. Um, so that 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 can expand your range infinitely down there. <laughs> it's it, yeah. The the talent in inhale though comes to comes in controlling it, comes in controlling it and making it sound good. And yeah, definitely subharmonics being your favorite you've used others uh, some others before but subharmonics by by far being your favorite definitely 
I've been trying so hard to get good subharmonics. Uh, it's very, very hit or miss for me. Mm -hmm. I remember, yeah. I was just going to say, I remember um, the, the best subharmonic I've gotten. I, I'd say probably the most even toned, the best sounding being my C sharp D flat one sustained for eight seconds the a couple weeks ago but that was about it i was nice. i was stretching for a b flat one in chest one morning and i was almost there i was literally this close but i was pushing so hard that i actually squeezed out a b flat zero subharmonic but for an absolute split second mm -hmm. yeah but, it's and subharmonics are so finicky right they like, are it, ridiculous it, it, if you have anything stuck in your throat or anything, that's probably not going to come out. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, like literally when I, I got COVID for the first time, I guess, and only time, like uh, a couple months ago, mm -hmm. and it, it ruined my subharmonics for a, for a while, actually. That was a, really? one of the reasons why I um, uh, added it to my habit tracker, because um, because it like COVID took such a toll on my voice where it just... I just couldn't do it. And it was very annoying because at the time I had to record, uh, it was like a, I think it was like a C or a C sharp one for the bass gang. Mm -hmm. And we ended up just using Marwan's clip because I just couldn't do several monarchs at that point. Really? And, and they're, they're back to being better now. They're fine now. But like, uh, but yeah, it's very finicky. Let's see. What kind of, how low of a sub do I have right now? I think I just have my G. Let's see. Yeah, I, I, I did hear it earlier. Oh, not quite a G. I think I might have an A. Ooh. Nah, not. It's still very froggy. Let me try one more time. It also takes like a lot of warming up sometimes, right? Oh, that was fry. Nah, kind of like a B oh, flat. It started there a little bit. Yeah, it's, it won't stay. I haven't warmed it up today, so that's probably why. But mm -hmm. yeah, if for I've, those of you listening, subharmonics, it, it is good to warm up to them because sometimes you can't like immediately just go wow and stuff like that. <laughs> you have to warm up. <laughs> yeah. I, that wasn't that funny, but it was because he's <laughs> like, so you can't just easily go wow. Yeah. <laughs> just imitating a bullfrog and stuff. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> That's how I reach my subharmonic notes. I just pretend to be a bullfrog. Just pet bullfrogs in your free time. Mm -hmm. I, I can't. I'm, I'm going to quit trying now. I'm going to embarrass myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Hey, we, we've all been there, right? Yeah, for sure. Let's see. So like it I actually took, fun fact, it took me six months to even be able to produce sub harmonics when I first started learning like back in 2015. You literally just pushed out a sub harmonic in the middle of that sentence. Yeah, and then again, it was six years ago, or however long ago, 2016 or 2015 was. Uh, so yeah, I've gotten gotten a little bit better, better than that. Like sometimes when I'm just talking and I, I like relax, yeah. my voice, sometimes they come out. It's it just is. it just happens from doing it for a long period of time. A long, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is too entertaining sometimes. Just sitting there playing around with it, going back and forth. It's very you, funny to listen to, too. Especially when you get stuck in between where you're just yeah, and it's like cracking. cracking. Uh, it's exactly. So, it's so silly. Yeah. I mean, what a lot of people don't realize, it's just like your voice cracking into falsetto or back into chest voice. That's what subharmonics is. It's a different register and uh, and it will crack just like falsetto and stuff. Yeah. Fun fact for subharmonics, folks. All right. Just a couple more and... Uh, will be migrating into your self-promotion section. Uh, do you have perfect pitch? I do not have perfect pitch, but I assume you do because you, you've been calling out notes. <laughs> I've been told I have, but um, I, I mean, I'm hesitant to use the word perfect in, in referencing myself, but people have told me that I have it. I, I guess I'll believe them if multiple people tell me this. <laughs> Fair enough. It sounds, I mean, I haven't tested the notes that you're saying, but it sounds, sounds about right. She sharp D flat. How, how do you feel? Uh, well, let's say that you do have perfect pits. How do you feel um, that that affects you as a musician? 
you know, it, I believe it benefits qu quite a bit, assuming that I do just being able to call out what note someone is singing or what note is being played or what note you're hearing, just so that way people can understand where it's at on an instrument or where it's at in the voice, where it sits, you know, understanding the placement. So that way some people you can, if you say like, oh, that's an E. And then people can be like, okay, so if they know what an E sounds like, they could be like, okay, so that's an E. But I didn't know that because I don't have perfect pitch. So I guess it, I guess it could be useful in that perspective, um, mm -hmm. especially with like if people that don't have perfect pitch aren't around and they want to know more about pitches and such. Um, so something else that's helped me is that like if you can also identify chords pretty easily. Although I don't mm. know my, I don't know my chords that well, I, you know, like now Peter can do stuff like that's a, that's a G minor seven with an added ninth or whatever. And I'm like, rock on man. I, I can't call out a chord like that. Cause I just don't know the chords mm. that well, but I do know the notes within the chords and it's, I feel like it helps though, mainly with, um, t telling people what the note is so they're like oh especially if they have that reference in their mind they know what mm -hmm. it sounds like to begin with and just confirming it yeah yeah really I helps i feel like that's probably the biggest use um if someone doesn't or if someone's trying to find a note like on a piano or an instrument and something and you have this spark to be able to call it off instantly they don't and they're like oh, what's that note and then you'd be like play it back and be like oh that's a that's a g and they'll be like oh g bop you know yeah very interesting for me that's what i feel like it'd be most useful for but anyone else that has perfect pitch in the comments uh, drop drop your thoughts mm -hmm. yeah. um but again yeah i don't have perfect pitch i only have relative pitch and i, kn I know a couple people uh friends uh who do have perfect pitch it's <sighs> I'm going to say it sounds, it feels, it feels, it doesn't really feel like a gift sometimes. Like to me, in a way, it f almost feels like musical common sense, but I need to, I have to constantly remind myself that not everybody can identify a note that quickly or identify mm -hmm. chords that quickly. Yeah. Like if I, if I just hear a random note, I can... I don't really like try and hear and think what note is it. Sometimes I just like sing it in my low range or sing it in subharmonics and see how it feels. And then I can guess like sometimes like within like a step or a half step, like what the note is, but I can't like hear a note and without a reference, just be like, that's a B flat. It's just, a, it's an interesting thing too. I'm eight episodes deep in, in at this point and I've, I'm yet to find anyone that has perfect pitch. It's a rare gift. It definitely seems like it. Mm -hmm. uh, one last thing, and then we'll migrate into self-promotion uh, piece. What is your one of your favorite things about being a singer? Hmm. If you had to call out any one thing. I have to say... That's a good question, because there's a lot. There really, really is. You can take it any direction you want to go. One, one that immediately... Um, the one that immediately comes to mind when you mention that is actually when um is like in a position where I'm at now, it's 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 great to share my voice and I love sharing my voice at adding just one more voice into this world of many voices, uh specifically a low one. But um I kinda like how I like like mm, finding a real hard way finding a real hard time to find a way to say this uh i really like how especially as a bass singer and i mentioned this before how it when i post my stuff and i see i because i see a lot of comments um and my favorite comment is like i have a low voice like this like this too i didn't know i didn't know there's music you could sing with like a low voice like this I think I might start singing and stuff. I've, I've had so many people that say like, 
you've inspired me as um, a person like who has a low voice to like start singing because I didn't think I could sing. I thought that was only for like the higher the people who could sing higher, like your Bruno Mars or your uh, Brendan Yuri, Charlie Puth at the disco, or your part yeah. Charlie Puth, exactly. Um, but yeah, so it's it's kind of great spreading like. Hey, if you have a low voice, you still can sing, and it doesn't have to be necessarily in a cappella or in choral music. Like you can just sing whatever you want, just sing it lower. And and exactly. people nowadays are really liking. But even when people just pick a random song and sing it super low, people kind of go like, "Whoa, is that but crazy?" Also, right? Yeah, but also I I just love singing as like a way of kind of expressing myself or like singing in a group a way of like a human bonding uh, a way to bond through art plus watching people get gain inspiration out of what you do right a hundred percent yeah is that not like to die for (laughs) is it crazy exactly that's the biggest one yeah It's, it's crazy man it's crazy to think about like if i told myself this four years ago uh that you would be where you were at today Exactly. Now to think about it, it was not necessarily almost four years ago. It was almost three years ago uh, that I started on TikTok. Mm-hmm. But um, the start of my great journey. But yeah, it's it's crazy to think about. Unreal, it, surreal. A lot of people would use that word. Surreal to think about. Humbling as well, too, I imagine. Mm-hmm. Humbling, Definitely. for Definitely. sure. I've experienced that in my YouTube channel growth as well. I mean, it's truly crazy to think about. No, a hundred percent. Just seeing people like you're creating something and you're like, these people actually care about what I'm creating. They want to see more. They want to hear more. Mm -hmm. It's truly humbling. A hundred percent, man. So I think that comes, that brings our traditional questions to an end. So that will give you a little bit of time to advertise, let the audience know what you got going on in your life. Uh, Plug any merch. You have the four for the next few for the next few minutes so uh sure, let sure, us know sure. what you got going on one quick thing do you mind if i go to the bathroom first go right ahead thank you i will be right there. i will uh cut this right here and then by the time he by the time this blah 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 he, he'll be back and we're back from our very brief bathroom intermission so you have the next few minutes to kind of advertise let us know what you got going on in your musical life so you have the floor yeah. so perfect so um well first of all uh you can ch- if you want to check out any of my channels like my tiktok my instagram my youtube my facebook just look up um at v dot bobby com not dot com let me try that again at the dot bobby base and by dot i mean like the period um if uh also i am trying to promote my spotify as much as possible please check me out on my spotify just search bobby bass and i will probably appear at the top search uh i just released actually um uh you're a mean one mr grinch and while it is not christmas season it is still a great song so it is a great cover guys thank you i highly recommend you guys to uh check out especially the music video and uh check it out on spotify or apple music all my stuff is out everywhere on every streaming platform uh, that I'll be at the songs that I've released so far. But um, definitely uh, that uh, that that's what helps me the most. Check out my um, just check out all my platforms, stream my songs. That helps. The biggest way you can help me, though, is if you uh, check me out on Patreon, which is essentially a website that um, there's a bunch of different tiers you can subscribe to to pay a certain amount of money a month um, to support me and you will get benefits in the meantime like uh, behind the scenes uh, videos on a bunch of my music videos or uh, or my vocals only for like TikToks or voice chats with me or uh, and also my all exclusive uh, discord which you can only access through any tier of my Patreon so definitely if if you want any way to support me Patreon is definitely the way to go and besides that um just check out my music check out the bass gang check out um the wellerman music check out pitch laps music check all of it out and i will link all of that information in in the description like i always do so and um are there any upcoming projects that we want to get our audience has hyped about i have um 
I do have my next uh, single coming out, ideally near uh, the end of February, which I'd actually just turned February, so it's this month. I also just noticed, thank God I noticed, uh, uh, my computer is not plugged in, so I'm going to quickly grab my battery in just a sec. Yeah. But um, but I do have a song upcoming. I want to keep it a surprise for now, but it is, it's, um, it is a song that is by a band that I mentioned at some point in this interview. So, <laughs> this will be so you fun, might have folks. to watch the interview again, or maybe three times to add, add to those views. Put, put two and two together, right? Exactly. I'm going to quickly grab my laptop Go for charger it. and plug it in. Go for it. That would give us a little bit of a intermission here as well. I had some community questions roll in while we were doing this. Cool. All right. I am back. My computer is charging. <clears throat> Sweet. Cool. So we are currently, if you are done with your self-promotion piece, we will be moving on to the uh, piece where you have the floor to ask me any questions should you have any. So you have the floor for that. Sounds good. I, I did uh, ask you earlier about Perfect Pitch, and we talked about that. Uh, yes. what, what instrument did you play in marching band? Hmm. Good question. So I actually played the trombone. The best instrument in the band, and I will argue till I'm blue in the face with anyone that disagrees. The reason why I like trombone so much is because like compared to like all these other instruments like trumpet or clarinet or flute, you have the buttons that shape uh, what notes that you're going to play. Trombone, mm -hmm. you can literally play any any note you want in any tuning and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And and just just that alone you can add so much character to trombone sound which is one of the reasons why i really like trombone and the best part about this uh, trombone too is that you can slide you can slide mm. into something yeah exactly and you can create all these like nice little articulations and like inflections on like just notes just by like sliding it slide or sliding it like a bunch and sliding the things fun. Let's be it's honest. It's comparable to yeah, dude. It's so much fun. We would literally be in high school, like on senior nights, we would go play I believe what we call the elephant song. They would the go elephant song. I think it's what we called it. I don't know what the actual name is. It but sounds it, like it would be played by a trombone. It goes something along the lines of this. Bum, 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 ba da da da. And then the melody goes something along the lines of I don't know what it's from. Do I have my trombone? No, I put it up. I was going to say, I, I had it out on the floor at one point where I was playing it a couple weeks ago, but I put it up. But we would play that on senior nights in marching band. And that was one tune that immediately came to mind when it comes to like slotting and stuff, because there's a lot in it. Mm hmm. Yeah, but trombone, I played it from sixth grade to senior year high school. There you go. It's um, I'm, it's really cool. You did marching band with that, too. It's uh, I it's love, I love brass. It's brass is a, it's brass is great. Mm -hmm. Woodwinds are just blech. they can stay in their corner. It's fine. Yes, they can. <laughs> <laughs> my oh. my one of my friends that um, started supporting this channel from the beginning, she's probably going to end up watching this and she's going to be like, listen here. <laughs> she's a clarinet. <laughs> I'll have, you know. Yeah, my girlfriend played clarinet, too. Haley, yeah. Haley, no hard feelings. I promise. <laughs> Sorry, Haley. The brass <laughs> the, um, the uh, what was it? Um, I was actually going to say that um, elephant song made uh thing that you mentioned. Like there was this one song that we would always play in pep band. It was uh the it was Jay Giles freeze frame. It was just a short pep band arrangement. Yeah, and everyone just became obsessed with it, especially like like the trumpets. Like literally, there were only two parts in it: the and then the. Like literally, it would just repeat those parts, but it was just so fun to play. And obviously, at the end, you could go, and then just like, yeah, just kind of, just kind of exactly. fade off. 
or as the trombone would go. Wah! Yeah, exactly. It's it just trombone is an amazing instrument. But yeah, f- for so, sure. I I also wanted to ask you what um how did you I don't know how you found me. It might have been through TikTok or the Bass Gang, or um how how, how did you find all these gr- great uh, arrangement of bass singers? Like I know you already had your meeting with P- Peter and Luke and um marwan and well casper's not a bass singer but uh you know (laughs) so believe or this is going to be actually kind of fairly um straightforward the bass nation yep fair (laughs) they they put me in touch with uh, the beginning people like i got in touch with casper and then after that it was a bit of a snowball effect after i talked to him i started gaining or my name started picking up more steam like okay this guy's ambitious he wants to talk to big names in the industry and stuff and i'm like okay people are starting to notice that i'm i'm ambitious i'm trying to get a hold of these people and just talk for music and geek out for two hours even or anywhere from hour to two hours and then like they said you know what you're you're so ambitious i think i want you to try and get xyz people on the on the podcast i'm like you know Mm. what bet i'm gonna do it and then I, I started messaging people. That was the day I started sending messages to people. I was like, and I'm not going to like, I'm not going to be one of those dudes that just blows up their, their messages. I'm be like one simple short, sweet to the point message. Hey, doing, I'm doing podcasts. We talk music for an hour and a half. You'd talk more about yourself. We, and we just talk about whatever comes to mind. And it's an interview. And before long, I started racking up people that people, other people wanted to see on the channel. And you in particular, you were among the first that I actually wanted to have on simply because I just enjoyed your music. I have been actually a pretty faithful follower since you started coming up on TikTok. I'd say probably you started picking up maybe 100K followers ish. Mm, And you're after the Halo video. Yeah. Good times. The what? What are you sitting at now, by the way? One point around one point seven, I think. Gotcha. gotcha. I be, I've been kind of in a. I haven't really, like, I, I actually released a couple of duets on TikTok within the past week. But I before that, for the past couple months, I hadn't really had anything. But I'm yeah. trying to pick up the TikTok content a little bit more. We'll see if we can break two million this year. There we go. I think we can definitely in the cards. But yeah, yeah that's pretty much how I started. I was like, I, I just want to sit down with these people and talk music and like. Through through my channel, I do something similar to Peter Barber. I do a lot of musical reactions and analyses, but mm-hmm. sharing the knowledge that I do know about music. And I was like, well, I mean, there's already a lot of people that do that. So I can't make that my niche. So what or niche, niche, whatever, however you say it, what can I make? How can I turn this into my special thing on YouTube? What makes me different from anyone else? And I was like, it, it clicked one day and I was like, podcast talk to these people interview them and i was like okay that's a great idea who should i start doing and i was like wait there are people in mind already that i know for a fact i want to talk to mm-hmm. and get out over music with and i'm like i st- immediately started thinking about peter was one you were one there's some big names out there that i'm trying to get a hold of now that i won't release at this time but i have mentioned in the previous podcast I'm trying to get a hold of nonetheless. Y'all have to just keep an eye out. Keep an eye out, please. And thank you. Um, But that's pretty much how I got started and how I found you guys. I through the base nation and of course, having my own personal interest, seeing Mm. you guys on the channel at some point. And now that we're here, it's pretty crazy to think about, but Mm. Hey, we're here. We're here doing exactly what I was hoping I'd get to at some point. 100%. 100%. Congrats, man. Appreciate it. It's good to be able to just sit down and geek over music, geek out over music. It's one of my favorite things to do. It is. It's the best. When in doubt, music. When in doubt, music it out. Music it out. I remember um, that like the, ba- the base, uh, the base discord server is also kind of where I met. Like, I think I actually met Peter around like on Instagram and Facebook throughout the same time that I joined that server, which was around like, again, around when I started TikTok. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, it was it was crazy to think about just like joining that server spawned 
uh, the base gang and stuff like that. Isn't that crazy? Like literally, we have a I have a thing behind me that has our name on it. It's pretty cool. Isn't it baffling? It's crazy. Yeah. Also, speaking of promotion, base gang it. merch. Go check it out. Yeah, base That's gang it. merch. I might have to get me a shirt or something at some point. I've been meaning to for a while. Mm-hmm. We actually just switched um, uh, merch company stuff, so I, I, I think I think everything's all set. But I need to double check. But sweet stuff. Yeah. Anything else sticks out that you want to ask about? Uh, those were my two main ones. Uh, hmm. I think that was. Who 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 is your again? If anyone kind of similar to a question you asked me, if you could have anyone in the world on the podcast and they will say yes and be into it, who would it be? Ooh, that's a tough one. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now, if we're talking slightly more reachable, I would say probably uh, any of the the top three bass singers, being Tim, Jeff, or Avi. Mm-hmm. Um, three if bass gods, mm-hmm. bass kings. Yeah. Um, if we're talking almost completely unreachable, I'm thinking probably Charlie Puth would be one of my ma- one of my biggest goals. Mm. Charlie, um, there's someone else I was thinking of. Um, if there were any um great music legends that I could bring back that I would love to talk to, I would have to say Elvis Presley, J.D. Sumner, mm. yeah, um. Yeah, yeah. Tennessee, Ernie Ford. Um, I think those are all the ones I can think of. But if there's any one specific one that's almost unattainable, I'd have to sit, I'd have to put that on Charlie Puth. Mm-hmm. Uh, more attainable, I'd put the the top three bass kings in acapella. Hell yeah! And it's actually in the cards. I know I mentioned I wouldn't gonna, I wasn't I wasn't going to be speaking about what uh, who I was going to have on, but. The chances are no longer zero percent. So, yes, that's exciting. They are they are still quite low, but the chances are not zero. So that's all you need sometimes. So you're saying there's a chance. Exactly. But actually, um, <laughs> it was it was funny. We were talking about pitch slapped earlier, and um, Charlie Puth, obviously musical genius. When he was back in college, he auditioned for pitch slapped, and he didn't get in. What? Which is crazy to think about. Like, obviously, I'm not saying I'm better than Charlie Puth or anything from just getting into this group. We're obviously Mm -hmm. very different singers. Mm -hmm. And to be in Pitch Left, you have to be a very certain specific kind of singer. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, I always, I I didn't know that until I joined the group and I was like, that's crazy. That is wild. But you also brought up, um, you were bringing, you brought up Elvis and, um, JD Sumner. And it reminded me of, um, a funny story. Uh, you know, David Kahn, very little, but yes. Yeah. He, um, he, he was essentially, uh, he was one of the guys I followed for a while. Like he was with like David Larson who he, they were kind of like some of the founding fathers of subharmonics along with two Yang. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, uh, David was in this, uh, I actually met up with David down at Tennessee, uh, in Nashville when my mom and I went down there last year. For mm-hmm. two years, uh, it's 2023 now, two years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, because Avi was performing and my mom had like a meeting down there. So she's like, come with me. Let's see Avi and stuff. Mm-hmm. David was also going down there. And David and I talked a lot. We already met before and stuff um, when I recorded him for Misty Mountains. Um, so he, uh, so we like hung out. And I think one of the last days we were in Nashville, uh, the three of us took this, um, it was like a, it was like a combo thing. You could get access to the museum of, or the country hall of fame. That's and, cool. Yeah. And you also uh, got a tour of this place called, I think it was the, uh, like, uh, it was called like studio something. And it was, Oh God, it was like RC, RC studio. A. I forget what it was called, but it was one of the studios in Nashville where tons and tons of hits were recorded like literally dozens and dozens of Elvis track, uh, Elvis track, Elvis Presley tracks were recorded there. Dolly Parton, uh, Roy Orbson, just a a ton of those people, including the stamps, which, um, which, uh, included JD Sumner. 
Yeah. And it was funny when we were doing that uh, interview or not interview, we were doing that tour. Uh, the guy was talking about the stamps and David uh, Khan actually sang with um, the, the sang in the stamps on like this Elvis like revival tour. What? Uh, he, he sang the role of J.D. Sumner. And um, there was actually one guy who was in in that in the stamps group with him who was one of the original members. Wow. And so he like told David like a ton of stories about Elvis and stuff like that. So that was kind of like cool to like he's like, oh, yeah, I was in that group. <laughs> That is obviously so not at cool. the time, but yeah. That is so cool, man. Mm-hmm. That yeah. is so obviously, cool. David Kahn, another subharmonic legend. This guy's hitting like C1's live in performance. It's couldn't beat me. Hoo-hoo. That's filthy. That is filthy. Honestly, yeah. That is filthy. I might have to get him on here at some point too. Yeah, check him out. I'm sure he'd love to. Yeah, I'll have to reach out. Tell that him Bobby says hi. Definitely will. Bobby says hi. Bobby says hi. <laughs> oh my god! Now we're gonna be asked to do ASMR. <laughs> mm. That conclude the questions you have for me at the moment. Yes, gotcha. Thank <clears throat> you for indulging me. You are quite welcome, my friend. We are going to move on to the community questions. Goodness, I just looked at the clock. Uh, let's see. So there was actually a lot, but I had had to sift through a few of them. So. Uh, this one is from Fernie. Uh, how can one find their mix as a low bass? As a low bass, uh, honestly, it depends on the singer um, because everyone's voices voice is different. Uh, every voice can uh, do is able to do the mixed voice. Sorry. Excuse me. And some people can learn it a lot easier, ooh, a lot easier than others. Um, like when I when I, I kind of already, well, fun fact about me, I, I didn't have access to my falsetto before I started singing um, or before I started taking voice lessons and stuff. I just never used that part of my voice, so I couldn't do it until I started singing. Yeah. Um, and so when I started uh, learning uh, how to produce falsetto and how to um, mix kind of came naturally like that, like if like I could just like start in chest and slide smoothly into falsetto without any crack cracks or flips. But I also know um, other friends who like can't do that. They'll like they'll start sliding and then their voice will flip up like they can't they they can't really like find that mix and stuff like that. And honestly, I'm not a voice teacher, um, so I can't properly tell you how to find your mix. But um, but one thing that does help is um, is trying starting in chest and trying to slowly slide into falsetto it, it kind of helps to like um think of keeping keeping it forward a little bit um so you can uh because almost it kind of nas- helps with like fun almost yeah, nasally almost, almost nasally uh yeah almost nasally but like not like down here and stuff like that which isn't really too much where you want to sing anyway um but um unless you're well actually i said that wrong but never mind uh, forget about the past five seconds. But when you're when you're thinking about um, mix, just trying to slide slowly, um, your voice might crack here and there, but eventually it will. Um, but eventually your voice will learn to like kind of smooth it out. Uh, so yeah, that's that's what I'm no expert on mix. Uh, David Kahn is actually amazing at mix, so um, I would check out some of his videos on YouTube. That's David. Khan, you spell his last name K A H N. Yeah, K H A K A H N. And I think he has a video on that. On it's called like how to sing higher or something. So oh, check cool. that out. Practice. It might not come immediately to you. It might take time. Like again, I mentioned before, subharmonics took me six months to be able to learn. And I had a friend who I taught it to was able to hit the second sub. She was able to hit the second subharmonic, like the first day I taught her. <laughs> and so, it it, de- it depends on the person. Right. Yeah. yeah. So don't think of it more as a thing like like I'm a bass singer, it might be harder to access mix. Um because that it can it depends on the singer and what Definitely. your voice has experienced. Like it could be a tenor with a crappy mix as well. <laughs> Not saying that your mix is crappy. I don't know what your mix sounds like for <laughs> We'll see. Uh, I guess we'll see at some point. This next question comes from Cuber. 
what was your initial reaction to finding out how low you can sing? That is a, a funny question, actually, <laughs> because when when I was um, growing up and my voice was changing, I wasn't really paying that much attention to my voice at the time. So I don't remember when my voice changed. And um, I can remember when people started noticing it. Like there's this one, um, oh, where was it? It must have been, I'm, I'm going to do some year math, 17, 16, 15, probably 2014, like maybe the summer of 2014. Um, this theater uh, camp that I went to, we were doing uh, Mulan, the musical. And, um, and at the beginning, uh, we all got in a circle, like at the beginning of the session, the guy was testing our ranges and he just, he went up and everyone went, we all went to our high note and everyone was singing at the same time. And then he started going down. And most of the people in the session were girls. There's probably like maybe like 10 guys or something, maybe like seven, 10 guys. Um, but eventually people started dropping out. I kept going. People started dropping out. I kept going. Soon everyone was out and it was me and I still went down like <laughs> half an octave. And it was, I didn't know, uh, I thought it was kind of funny and cool at the time because I, <laughs> because I just, the guy's just like, do, 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 and just kept going and going and going. And I was like, no, I'm still feeling fine. And I just, we just kept going and everyone was like laughing and I was laughing and it was like, damn. That was that was a funny memory, but it was kind of around then when um, my voice uh, changed. I got you. I got you. The next yes. question was from Bassman Mateo, but you uh, answered that he asked where you, uh, when your voice dropped. So it was right around 2014 ish. Or yeah, well. so that was um, I, I don't say my voice dropped around there. It probably dropped like maybe a year or two before that. Mm -hmm. I'd say going from. High, going from middle around middle school transitioning to high school that's probably when my voice first started to change gotcha like because i remember in high school um i'm trying to think of the lowest note i could probably go in high school like around when i first started voice lessons was probably c sharp below c um so yeah that was probably around 2014 when i could do that gotcha gotcha <clears throat> This one comes from Finnegan. Um, did you ever or do you wish you were ever a higher voice type? Uh, yeah, sometimes. I mean, I don't seriously like wish I was like, Genie, can I change my voice to a tenor? Like, I love being a bass. I'd rather be a bass than a tenor or a baritone. Um, but there are like certain moments like hearing songs. Um, <clears throat> hearing songs like uh, that, like uh, Bruno Mars is singing or like that someone's keep bringing up Bruno Mars. I love Bruno Mars. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and even like disturbed uh, David Draymond, he doesn't sing low. He sings high and he sings up there. And obviously that's way that's out of my range for now. But kind of the cool thing about being a bass singer is that everyone's voice kind of their low to their lowest chest range. Everyone has a, a biological limit. You can obviously practice to sing lower and you can lower your voice. Uh, but there is a limit that you like can't really push below. Like if you were singing like, if like your lowest was like a G two, or or something. If your lowest note was a G two in in college and stuff, and you're practicing to sing low, I wouldn't expect you to practice to be able to hit a solid B flat one or something like that. Yeah. But but your but <clears throat> upper range is much more flexible since your vocal cords can stretch. They can stretch, and you can train your vocal cords to stretch a lot more. So everyone. If, if you practice correctly, everyone can have a really good high high range and kind of pass off um, mix as chest as well. Definitely. But definitely. Uh, so I sometimes <clears throat> have those moments, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, you do. I'm sure everyone has those moments too. Like I'm sure tenors were like, oh, I wish sometimes I could sing like a soprano or a bass. And the soprano's like, well, it's a bunch of sopranos probably. Are happy <laughs> <for> sopranos. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, this one comes from Jordan Guy. Um, he said, if you could steal anyone's voice, who would it be? Great question. They, a bunch of different people's voice for different reasons. Probably. Um, or if you could pull any certain qualities cool. from certain voices and mix, mesh them together, even. I like that. 
um i'd say the range and the range and power of glenn miller um for those of you who don't know glenn miller is a a, a boss of profundo an incredibly low bass singer uh in choral settings and he's able to hit like g1s and f1s with ease and uh which is which is pretty incredible um so that uh who else hmm david draymond obviously because he's one of my favorite singers um ah uh, i'm trying to think of like a really nice it would be cool to try out Pavarotti's <coughs> voice for for a day or a week or a life um definitely Pavarotti. hmm but yeah i'd say that i think those definitely i think there was one time i was thinking about this one time like if I, if there was any one voice that I could steal and use as my own, I would use the power and punch. I would use the power and punchiness and range of Glenn Miller, but I would I would so totally steal Marwan's timbre. Marwan, yeah, he it, went. Yeah, you, he's, sorry, you go. No, I was just gonna say his timbre is so different, it's so mm-hmm. unique. Marwan is incredibly impressive, especially for like such a young age. Um, because like I, I wish I could do what he was doing uh when when I was that young. Like it's crazy. Yeah, me too. Marwan has an incredible <clears throat> amount of potential. He's uh, got he's got like the tim the timbre of a lyric baritone, but he's got the range of a bass borderline low bass. It's kind of mm-hmm. hilarious. Yeah, like he's hitting some like salt, and obviously we talked about like recording and stuff. But still, you have to be able to hit the notes to at like, all, and yeah. not just hit the notes, sa- make the notes sound good. Yeah, there's a big difference between hitting a note and singing a note. And Marwan has a very, very impressive range with all of that. Yeah, he's got an A sh- or he's got an uh, he's got an A flat G sharp. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised that he has hit that at some point, especially on one of his videos. I always think back to the um. The copycat. It was a. Uh, yes. It was the one he arranged. Where he's like, sorry, sorry, sorry. Obviously yes. in a different key, but when he goes down to, I think it was an A or a B flat. Yeah. It was. Uh, I loved it. It. It's just. It's so different. You. You won't hear another bass voice like it. Hmm. Yeah. I can't wait to hear what he sounds like. Like when he's like. Thirties and stuff like that. Dude, that's gonna be crazy. I can already tell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, this one is from me. Um, briefly tell us a little bit about your project. Oh, death. Mm, good question. So, oh, death, honestly, oh, death. I wish I started it earlier because I released it on Halloween. You kind of don't want to do that. You want to release it like near the beginning of the month. So people have time to watch it, Mm -hmm. but, uh, it actually started picking up recently, which I'm glad about, but, um, oh, death, it stemmed from a TikTok I did back in 2021. And it was just a duet with Lauren Paley, and she, um, she, there was she was like sting, doing her thing, singing in a stairwell, and I was like, "This sounds creepy." Bass would make it even creepier. I added bass along to with it, and it it did really well. Yeah, and I just kept a thought in the back of my mind. I was like, "Oh, this would be really cool for Halloween," and I was like, "Maybe I'll do it next year." And uh, I eventually reached out to Lauren. Um, uh, near the beginning or uh, it was probably summer of 2022 and uh, the project came out at the end of October 2022 and um, I was like hey Lauren would you be down with doing a um, a cover of Oh Death and uh, and she's like 100% and uh, so I started planning I actually started the arrangement probably around uh, near the beginning or probably near the middle of September which was way later than I was hoping to start it and so I um started like making the arrangement and stuff um I started putting together like uh some sound effects I used a lot of um uh I honestly thank god for a lot of the stock logic sounds and like I used logic's fx um effects sample uh I think it was called like fx1 or something it's uh audio sample pack and I used a lot of that in it, and I used a lot of Isotopes um, Iris 2. I used a lot of that for, um, especially the ambient sounds. 
Yeah. So shout out to those for um, a lot of the sound effects behind it. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> and as I was working through it, like literally while I was like in the middle of the arrangement process, I was thinking of like the and I'm like, hmm. Like I, I, I would I would sound good on that, but like you know what you know what timbre I would really love on this? Like and just a like extra something really gritty. Exactly. Something really gritty. And I was like, who's who has the grittiest bass voice I know? Colm. And so I reached out to Colm. Colm being as he is, he's down for anything. And he he uh and he's like hundred percent. And they all sent me their vocals. I mixed it together and I was eventually found um, eventually I found one I was happy with and I did the mix. I had um, uh, 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 his name's Dave Sperandio uh, he, uh, for vocal mastering. Uh, that's the company name. He he masters a lot of acapella, um, a lot of acapella tracks. He's mastered pentatonics tracks. He masters all the Wellerman tracks. Um, he masters the bass gang tracks now. He um and he masters some of my tracks. Like he mastered Hoist the Colors. Mm -hmm. He mastered um O oh Death and uh and what um and oh for those of you who don't know what mastering it is, mastering is once you have like when you're mixing, you have all those tracks you're like uh changing the volume, adding effects on, and once the mix, which is like all those tracks sounds good you bounce it out or export it. And so you have just one stereo um, audio file. Then you take that audio file, you um, essentially raise the volume to like the standard volume for streaming and stuff like that. You might do some EQ stuff and a bunch of things here and there. Mm -hmm. And it takes a really, really, really good ear to, um, to master. And that was kind of a poor explanation of mastering <laughs> since it was very quick. Uh, but it takes a very, very a very delicate and good ear to um, pick out all the nuances of a track and kind of shape it just to make, just to make it ready for transportation. So it sounds good on everything. Sounds good on headphones. Sounds good on iPhone. Sounds good on the computer speaker. Um, sounds good in the car. That's why you want to test your master in like on a bunch of different things. Test it on your crappy um, earphones <laughs> and stuff like that. Test it on literally everything before you, um, solidify that final master but um sorry i just went off on a tangent about mastering here no no worries but um but yeah uh dave mastered it and then i sent it out for distribution obviously distribution takes a while it takes a couple of weeks for it to actually come out so it dropped to like mid-november or something um but uh i was i was actually very happy with how um o death came out and it was it didn't it's it didn't like do too well when it first started, um, but like it, it's picking up now and it's doing. I, I I like how it's doing now. It's it's such an eerie tune, especially. Mm. I just I love the original and God, what's his name? Stan something. Stan I should Lee. know. It's Stan. It's not Stan Rogers. That's a different guy. No, Stan something. While I've got you on here, I'm gonna look this up because it's gonna bug me. Go ahead, honestly, because I'm wondering. Ralph too. Stanley. Ralph Stanley. Ralph Stanley. Yes. Turns out it was his last name, and that was from um. Uh, oh, brother, where art thou? Where? Yes. Oh, brother, yes. where art thou? Um, one of the best movies ever. I actually haven't seen that one. Fun fact. Now I probably should because I did the song. It is so good. It Adding it so to good. the list. Definitely, go. definitely do it. Fun but fact. Yep. I was just, I was Go just ahead. gonna say fun fact about that movie. It's actually a very loose representation of um, that. I think it's a really long poem or something that a lot of people read in high school called the Odyssey. Odyssey. Oh, really? It's so apparently it's like a modern a, representation of that. It's a more modern representation of that. Apparently, That's I was cool. I was I learning that, that in high school. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, right? Damn. The more you know, it's like it's like how uh, like. <laughs> The Lion King is kind of like Hamlet. And stuff oh my like gosh, that. yeah. But um, but oh, it's been turned. Oh yeah, but um, I did take like some lyric, uh, a lot of like the lyrics, lyrical ideas from um, or just the lyrics, I guess, from uh, Ralph Stanley's uh, version of O Death, mm -hmm. which I used for um, but mostly the the style of uh the song obviously was more 
tater to like uh i think her name was jen titus um because her voice kind of reminded me of lauren's and um and also it obviously had the mm in the background mm -hmm. uh so, so that that cover kind of inspired my cover yeah and i did get a little bit of vibes from that i think i had heard it originally and i did definitely get those vibes yeah i think it was the one that was from supernatural yes yes indeed uh let's see another question from fernie any big plans for pitch slap this year yeah well pitch slaps actually um a pitch slapped oh, we're we're recording an album right now which i am very very excited about um because i i remember the last pitch slapped album when it came out uh i was in college um and my friend was showing me he's like yeah, check this out and i was like this is crazy and then some of those songs that came out on that album i've learned or a lot of the songs that came out on that album i learned and so it's kind of crazy to see like where i was then and now but um, yeah, we're recording an album and it's going to be a pretty big album with a lot of really, really cool songs on it. Really. And obviously they're going to be all pitch slapified, all crazy, all jazzy, all riffy like. No riffs from me, but you know. This is going to be fun. I'm going to listen to this when it comes out. This is going to be an unbelievable album. I am very excited. 100%. But besides that, uh, just normal pitch slap stuff, gigging and, and whatnot. Good stuff, man. Uh, this one comes from Bass Krispies. Um, uh, goaded bass tenor acapella duo. Is ooh, hmm. I'm assuming he means like uh, the best like bass tenor duo. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I'm trying to think of some bass tenor duos. Like, what are some that come to mind when you think of a bass tenor duo for acapella? Well, I don't know. I mean, the one the one collab Casper and Marwan did kind of broke the acapella world. Well, not yeah. really, but it was really good. That makes sense. Uh, ooh. I really like, I, in specific collaborations, uh, one that comes to mind is uh, when Avi collaborated with Peter Hollins in Black is the Color of My True Love's Hair. I really yes. like their, their voices together on that. I think, isn't Peter, the, isn't he a Barry, though? I don't remember. Yeah, but he gets up there. <laughs> he, he sure does. Oh, I don't know um, what a tenor, tenor, uh, tenor, tenor bass duo I would I uh, would think of. Uh, Peter Hollins and Tim on Misty Mountains was good too. Oh, how did I forget that one? That one as well. Um, but I can't really think of any like tenor, specifically tenor bass duos off the top of my head right now. So I will go with those ones. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm a bit of at a loss for that one. Let's see. Uh, it looks like it, this is going to be our last community question. This one comes from Element of Surprise. He asked, um, apple juice or orange juice? Mm. Orange juice, I'd have to say. I just drink it a lot more. It can be more aggressive than apple juice, but I feel like it just works a lot better <laughs> in like breakfast. And when you're mixing drinks and stuff like that, it's, it's got a lot of potential when it comes to that, too. It does. The potential of orange juice, the yes. potential of orange juice, folks, that brings us to the end of all of the questions that we have for Bobby at this point in time. Um, this brings us to the last portion of the podcast before we wrap it up. So anything that can that needs to be said or we want to say we both have the floor to share that for the next few minutes before we wrap this up. So if there's anything that comes to mind, say it. Uh, sure. Even if you don't use, um, Oh, now I know what I was going to say. Even if, uh, like music isn't your full-time thing, which it, it, it's not for a lot of people. Um, to, just do it for fun. If you like doing it, like, I whipped out the trumpet a couple of days ago. I have no reason to play the trumpet, but it's still something new. And I was like, I still remember a bunch of stuff. So I was playing like some blues licks and stuff. Yeah. And just music is an art. Just use it, use it as therapy, use it as, or music and singing, use it as therapy, use it for fun. Do uh, Even if you're not good, just sing with friends. And if they're not good and you're not good, then you can both sound not good together. Exactly. And do, and <laughs> yeah. Do that. And um, 
and if singing is like a little daunting to you uh that's okay it just takes one step at a time like being i i think it was finn no not finn it was jake from uh adventure time that said uh sucking at something is uh the first step to kind of being good at something so i like to take that approach in a lot of things it makes a lot of sense too you have to Mm -hmm. start somewhere you you can't just dive in the deep end and expect to swim yeah most people don't just jump into something and are immediately amazing at it like some of the best singers you've heard like they probably weren't great when they first started out right uh some were a lot were but like a lot of them weren't just takes practice and dedication yeah for sure guys this has been the vocast with bobby bass bobby waters this has been a blast this is by far the new longest podcast on the channel but this is a guilty pleasure i enjoy doing it and we're definitely gonna have bobby come back on at some point for a uh, follow-up podcast and definitely if you are enjoying the content on this channel I would appreciate it if you would throw me a thumbs up, like like the video, drop some comments, as long as they're not toxic. Throw me a subscription if you're really enjoying it. And if you are enjoying my content to the point to where you want to take the contribution to a channel to another level, I also have a Patreon where you can support the, me and the channel for as little as $3 a month, spanning all the way up to $10 a month. If anyone decides to give that much, I will open up another tier at some point, but if you like I said, if you're enjoying the channel, you want to contribute, that's the best way to do so. Um, make sure you check out Bobby's information, go visit his socials, follow him, listen to his music for crying out loud. Dude is freaking talented. He's got a good voice. He's he's just he's an overall very smart, very humble individual. Go out there, listen to his stuff, support him on social media, drop some likes, comments, and subscriptions his way. He's been a heck of a guest here today, and we were happy to uh, have him. Also, make sure you check out the Wellerman, Pitch Slapped, and the Bass Gang. I'll have all of their information in the description. So, guys, this has been Drew with the Vocast. We love you. We take care of yourselves. We will see you in the next one. Bye. Peace.